Welcome to the Foundations of the IEP Training Series. This recording is part of a series of videos on IEP compliance. The purpose of providing prior written notice to a parent is to make sure the LEA and the parents are on the same page about a child's educational program. Provide the parents with an opportunity to voice any concerns or suggestions. Provide sufficient information to ensure that the parent understands the rationale behind the LEA's decision making regarding a particular proposed or refused action. To ensure that informed parental consent is obtained as necessary. Or assist the parent in determining the basis for any disagreements with the proposed or refused actions addressed in the prior written notice and whether to seek resolution of any dispute through local dispute resolutions, procedures, a state complaint, mediation, or due process hearing. Additionally, the U.S. Department of Education, the Office of Exceptional the Office of Special Education Programs stated that the purpose for providing prior written notice is to ensure that a parent understands the special education and related services which an LEA has proposed or refused to provide to a student. If a parent does not understand the services being provided, it follows that the parent could not have agreed to the proposed services. Regulatory Requirements regarding the provision of prior written notice must be given to the parents of a child with a disability within a reasonable amount of time before the LEA proposes or refuse, refuses to initiate or change the identification, evaluation, or educational placement, including graduation with a standard or advanced diploma of a child, or if the changes will affect the provision of a free appropriate public education for the child. Examples of when a prior written notice in includes during evaluation or reevaluation, consent for evaluation if the child is found eligible, if the school refuses to eva evaluate, or if there was a refusal to provide an independent educational evaluation. During identification, including initial categorical identification, a change in categorical identification, or a term a termination of categorical identification. During placement, some examples include initial placement determination, change in the least restrictive environment along the continuum of placement, of, of placement alternatives, refusal, refusal to change placement as requested by the parent, a change in placement due to parental placement of a student with a disability in a residential facility or non for non-educational reasons, or when the brick and mortar placement location is in dispute, or change in placement due to disciplinary reasons. Prior written notice is given when there is a change in the provision of FAPE, including after an IEP has been proposed by the LEA, after IEP addendum without a meeting, refusal to provide a specific instructional method methodology requested by the parent, a change in services, change in accommodations or modifications, changes in transportation arrangements that are required for the provision of FAPE, a change of testing to any alternative assessment method, provision of comparable services when a student transfers into an LEA, or graduation with a standard or advanced diploma or termination of services. Other examples of when prior written notice is required included, include a refusal to convene an IEP team meeting after a parent request, a revocation of parental consent, refusal to provide services to a student who is parentally placed in a private school when the parent requests services that are not under what the LEA previously determined to be part of equitable services that would, pre that would be provided to such students, or finally a transfer of rights at the age of majority. We will cover each of the seven mandated requirements of prior written notice in depth but generally, the prior written notice must be comprehensive enough to address each of the LEA's proposed or refused actions. The prior written notice should eliminate all doubts or misunderstandings and provide support for the decisions communicated within the notice. They should specify the reasoning behind any proposed or refused actions 
and include and describe the facts of the meeting in a neutral tone and should be void of emotional, judgmental, or speculative statements. Should also avoid the use of acronyms such as IDEA, LRE, IEE, without proper explanation. And importantly, please use complete sentences. The first requirement of a prior written notice is a description of the action provided, proposed, or refused by the LEA. This mandated requirement appears to imply that a separate notice be completed for each proposed or refused action. However, there is nothing in the federal or state special education laws and reg regulations which would prohibit an LEA from including all of the proposed and refused actions from one meeting into a single prior written notice as long as there is a description of each action that was proposed or refused. It should be clear in this section what happened in the meeting. The description provided should be written as a statement that is factually grounded and informative, rather than being written in a vague, generic, or normative format. Anyone should be able to read this section of the prior written notice and understand what the team discussed and what the team agreed on and what was proposed or refused. The second section is an explanation of why the LEA proposes or refuses to take the action. This section of the prior written notice is where the LEA were detail, will detail its rationale for its proposed and or refused actions. It is from this section that the parent should understand how the LEA reached reached its decision on a specific action. The prior written notice document must specify the reasoning behind the school's decision to reject the opinions of individuals or providers outside of the school. For example, alerting the parents that a child's IEP team has decided not to adopt the parent's po private provider's recommendations may not be enough to guard the school um, in a due process hearing. Additionally, if there was more than one reason for each decision, the IEP team should include each reason why it is proposing or refusing the specific action. A third requirement of prior written notice includes a description of any of the other options the IEP team considered and the reasons for the rejection of those options. In this section, the school must describe in detail any other options which were considered and why they were rejected. There may be instances in which no other options were considered. If so, avoid using the phrases, no other options considered, none, or not applicable, without an explanation. And again, please use full sentences. The next requirement of a prior written notice is that a description of each evaluation procedure, assessment, record, or report the LEA used as a basis for the proposed or refused action must be included. Prior written notice must, must identify each evaluation procedure, assessment, record, or report used as a basis for the proposed or refused action. If all of these are not identified, the school is ex excluding critical information that the parent needs in order to form a basis for providing their consent for a proposed action regarding their consent or for filing a complaint, seeking mediation or due process to dispute the rationale for the proposed or refused action. A fifth requirement of prior written notice is that it must include a description of any other factors that were relevant to the LEA's proposal or refusal. In this section, the school must describe in detail any other relevant factors that were used by the IEP team in formulating its decision to propose or refuse an action. Other factors that may fa affect an LEA's proposed or refused action include, but are not limited to, language and or cultural issues, communication concerns, health concerns, behavior concerns, consideration of the harmful effects of the program or placement proposed, or the ref and or the refused and assistive technology. There may be instances, however, in which no other factors were relevant to the proposed or refused action, 
and they are not that were not already addressed in the elements of the prior written notice. If so, avoid simply writing not applicable. Use of a complete statement will provide the parent with strong documentation that this question was reviewed in completing the prior written notice and that there were no other relevant factors considered and remove any doubt. The sixth requirement of prior written notice is a statement that the parents of the child with a disability have protection under the procedural safeguards. You will need to use the auto text feature to fill in the portion of the prior written notice and enrich. It is a little piece of paper with a plus sign. Click on it and the necessary information will autofill in this section. Students with disabilities and their parents have protection under the procedural safeguards of IDEA. A copy of these procedural safeguards and, if needed, assistance in understanding the provisions of the procedural safeguards may be obtained by contacting the, special, um, special, the student's special educator. Be sure you are using the district-provided procedural safeguards and that you are providing them to parents. The final requirement of the prior written notice is to include is to include sources for the parent to contact in order to obtain assistance in understanding the provisions of the notice requirements. You will need to use the auto, auto text feature to fill in this portion of the prior written notice and enrich as well. It's the same little piece of paper with the plus sign like you see above and like you saw on part six. This section of the prior written notice explicitly requires that the school division identify specific resources for the parents to contact should they need assistance. Therefore, the names of individuals and or the office within the school division that is most appropriate for the parent to contact should be clearly identified. Prior written notice shall be given to parents of a child with a disability within a reasonable amount of time before the LEA proposes or refuses an action related to identification, evaluation, educational placement, or provision of FAPE to a child with a disability. Such notice must be given to the parents a reasonable time before the agency implements the, that action but after the agency's decision on the proposal or refusal has been made. Federal and or state education laws and regulations do not define what would be deemed as a reasonable amount of time. The South Carolina Public Charter School District policies and procedures state specifically that the parents may receive a copy within seven calendar days of the IEP meeting. The prior written notice must be provided to the parents prior to initiating the changes agreed upon by the IEP team. The prior written form is provided in rich. You must use the prior written notice in Enrich. Each school is required to define how and when prior written notice is distributed to parents, distributed to parents, and how the distribution is documented. But the time frame cannot exceed seven, to seven calendar days. You must review your school's policies and procedures for the specifics at your school. It needs to be em emphasized. Changes in an IEP cannot be implemented until the parent has received prior written notice. This is non-negotiable. The school will need to keep this in mind when determining the implement implementation date on the IEP, as prior written notice must be given before the IEP is implemented. The prior written notice is completed by the LEA and not the parents. It is based on the information which was provided by the parent along with other members of the team orally or written during the discussion making process asso associated with evaluation, identification, placement, and provision of faith for their child. Parents do not have the right to require that something be included in the prior written notice. Neither do parents have an overriding veto regarding what the school has chosen to include in the prior written notice. In plain language, Parents cannot require the LEA to add, subtract, or otherwise include information in the prior written notice if the LEA does not deem it necessary. However, if there is something that the parent has requested and the school has said no, this is something that is required to go in the prior written notice. This concludes our training on prior written notice. 
This was part of the foundations of the IEP training series. For more information, please see our other trainings on meeting notices, present levels, findings, annual goals, progress monitoring, services, and transition. This was not intended to be all-inclusive, but a beginning of your process of writing IEPs in the South Carolina Public Charter School District.